A 52-year-old man is brought to the emergency department because of a suprahyoid stab that has extended from one side of the neck to the other. When asked to protrude the tongue, the result is seen in the accompanying image. The injury most likely involves which of the following nerves? The answer would be the left hypoglossal. And you can see that what is happening with the cranial nerve 12 denervation is that you end up licking your lesion, which causes the tongue to curl to the side that is injured. If you were looking at injuring the right hypoglossal, it would go the, to the right side. The left vagus um, would have to cut the carotid sheath and the right glossopharyngeal is too deep to be cut from the anterior surface wounds in the neck. Fourteen-year-old patient that's admitted to the hospital to remove an asymptomatic but fast-growing tumor from the pterygopalatine fossa. It was noted upon imaging for an unrelated head trauma. If the tumor is allowed to continue to grow, which of the following symptoms would be the most likely to develop? This question is asking whether or not you understand what's going on in the pterygopalatine fossa and how small this space is. Now, which of the following functions contains um, uh, modalities that are distributed through the pterygopalatine fossa is essentially all it's asking you. So, what are the options? Hopefully, you're cluing in on the fact that the corneal ulceration is the possibility that could come from a tumor growing in the pterygopalatine fossa. This is kind of an indirect component of getting to the answer, though. Because what's going to be happening is you're going to lose lacrimation to the lacrimal gland. And after you lose lacrimation, there's an increased risk of corneal ulceration. Sensation to the auricle is provided from the infratemporal fossa and from the cervical plexus. The difficulty chewing is going to be associated with uh, motor cranial nerves. And those are going to be associated with V3, because those muscles of mastication. Difficulty swallowing is going to be pharynx and tongue associated. And then sensory loss to the anterior two-thirds of the tongue is cranial nerve 7 associated. And that's below the corner of the mouth, so it would have to be V3 and 7.